Hyperloop, and we'll, again, we'll talk about these other things. Uh, how long before something meaningful? And uh, when I say this, I am aware this is going to happen. This is the future. I, may be, I probably won't be alive when it does. I think it will be. I think it will be. That's, that's, that's actually the point. I think it will be. You know, last year we, we built a, a test facility in Nevada, 500 meters, and demonstrated the Hyperloop system. Worked end to end. Uh, you can see it. You, you can do it. 200 on that test loop up to 240 miles an hour. Just remind us how it does the, it will work. So, 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 so actually, what, what this is doing is putting together technology that we know and understand. Right. It's creating a low pressure environment. Um, to be able to do this, and you're, you're using pods running through a low-pressure environment. And then the other beauty of this is its magnetic levitation. So it is so smooth that at the top speeds, you should be able to hold a cup of coffee. Right, and let me just add dot, 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 and it is so expensive. Well, look, it's infrastructure. There is no question about it. We've never built infrastructure anywhere that doesn't have a lot of cost to be able to do it. But this is game-changing infrastructure. I think that's the big difference. For somebody like yourself, who's had real grassroots experience with the world's largest public transportation system, subways, why did you get involved in this? It's exactly the point. The point is that, that this is now at, is your question from the beginning. You said, will I be able to see it? Will I be around to see it? I think we're at that point. We're at the point where we're moving from saying this is an amazing, incredible technology to the fact that it is now becoming a transportation system. That's what I want to do. When you hear people like Amazon moving into New York and Google also moving another 20,000 or 10,000 staff, um, it's great for the economy at one level, but the infrastructure of this city cannot really... I mean, the, the, the subway is already antiquated. So, so let's generalize it a little bit. Yes. Let, let, let's generalize it. Let, let's take the fact that cities are becoming increasingly important all over the world. 50% of the world's population will be in cities by the year 2050. That's just 30, 30 years away in terms of being able to do it. We also know that the model of the city that we have today, with expansion, with, with uh, uh, it's reaching out and, and doing that, doesn't really work that well, mm -hmm. that we need to keep it much more concentrated in the way that we're doing it. What this is really saying is reimagine that paradigm. Imagine that you can actually have cities that are, that are in a geographic cluster now, perhaps 100, 200, 300 miles away, and you can be moving between those cities in a matter of minutes. I feel very Luddite when I, you know, because, oh, I haven't seen the light, I haven't understood the Nirvana, but I push down to when you think one would expect to see something like this? I think we could begin to see construction of the, the next test facility by the end of next year. And I think you could be in construction on, on a full-scale project within a couple of years after that. The step that we have to take and that we have to be able to do is to, to be able to test and gain the certification of this technology. But it's there, and so we're ready to do it. Which cities are best suited? Here's the one, you know, we have in this country, yeah. we, have, we have four projects, studies underway right now in Texas, in Colorado, in Missouri, and in the Midwest. And let me talk about the Missouri one for a second, because I love that so one. So that would go between? St. Louis and Kansas City. The I-70 right there, the first section of the interstate highway that was built in this country. Now reimagine that. Instead of thinking about cars moving at 70 miles an hour, what if we were thinking about pods moving at 670 miles an hour? That's the incredible difference. That journey, Google it, right? I, go, I Google it all the time. St. Louis to Kansas City, you Google that. That's three and a half hours to get there. That's what it comes up every time, 30 minutes. So tell me how much that would cost. I know this is how can one put a price on uh, uh, the future, but how much would it cost? Our estimates right now are that this is roughly 60 to 70% of the cost of high-speed rail. So uh, we believe that this can be done for the linear cost of high speed rail, about 60 to 70% of really? the cost of that. Digging? Uh, Infrastructure? Well, you don't, you won't, so take the example right. I just give you, you won't you'll, dig, you'll, you'll, do, do, you'll, do, you'll, do, you'll do that above ground. You'll, and I yeah. think, again, we're talking, about, we're talking about distances that are not digging underneath mm -hmm. the heart of New York City. We're talking about how we're, we're connecting areas. Final thought, are you a masochist? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you... Uh, You've taken on some of the, 
you know, get your rubber gloves on, strong rubber gloves and, and to, to deal with the world's subways in the biggest cities with the most entrenched problems. And now this. But this one is so much fun. This, this one is so much fun. I'm surrounded by people who are truly, truly coming up with disruptive, game-changing technology. And I have the opportunity to go around and talk to people all around the world right now about how we are going to put this in and work with them. This one's fun. Do I get a seat on a ride? I'd love you. Excellent. Thank you. Good.